Looks like Skins is sending it over to Drafts. I'm gonna head right on over there. Duel and they probably Cryquest probably doesn't want to deal with that. Nar gonna be banned for the side of Cryquest. Uh, Nar is a strong top lane at the moment, however, the Maokai one skin could be a top, could be a jungle, so we're not really sure. But Cryquest is still betting it out just in case. However, we see the Cho'Gaf being banned out. Cho'Gaf, another strong tank in the meta. If he can care, if he can, um, <clears throat> if he can get to that, those uh, six stacks as soon as possible and get going in the late game, Chokev can do a lot of damage on the side of CryQuest. However, I mean, for TPM, sorry. However, we're going to see the Renekton ban come out to Renekton, probably not as strong as a laner as we thought in this meta right now, as most top laners you'd see would probably be the Galio, the Chokev, Maokai. Um, Renekton, not as picked as often right now, but it's still a pretty strong pick in the meta. Or, not sorry, not in the meta, in the top lane, as he can go toe to toe with some of the top lane meta picks. However, the final ban, we're going to see um, probably, wow, four top lane bans for the second phase between both teams. We just want to run out the top of the map completely. No junglers, no tops, period. Throw off yeah. some off meta picks now. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty interesting. Once again, still, the Maokai can flex the top, can, still can flex top jungle. I imagine he flex top. I don't think uh, Boosted Lee Sin would like to um, play the Maokai jungle. I don't think that's gonna be his style, but you know, it's still in the questions. However, Galio is gonna be locked in for Cryquest. Galio just 
finally picking off one of the last top laners they really have. No, uh, let's see, TPM waited a little long to pick out their jungle, so jungle is being pinched, but we're gonna take out possibly the Kane. Oh boy, Ooh. Kane is so fun. I'm glad he's coming a little back to some world uh, Gigabyte Marine status. Yeah, definitely. Kane is right now a great jungle pick in my opinion. Probably one of the best uh, junglers in clearing camps. Just being able to get the places fast. Uh, great counter ganker too. Um, he does a lot of damage uh, all throughout. And we're going to see the Twitch being the last locking for TPM. Surprisingly, no Zyra Rakan bot. But uh, it was completely Twitch does open, work too. And we just didn't want to take it. I mean, I like Twitch and Rakan yeah. so well. Recon sets up the spray and pay just perfectly. I'm gonna finish mm -hmm. running out a comp of Syndra. Kesty. It's an alright matchup into the Zir. If she can get ahead first. Yeah. Um Syndra definitely not bad against Zir. I feel like it's more of a 60-40 matchup. Little bit advantage to Zir. He does have the slight range advantage, but Syndra is gonna be able to set up ganks towards the mid lane. Expect to see a little bit of Rek'Sai presence towards uh, the mid side. Um, I expect CryQuest to really emphasize on trying to shut down the Zeer this game. I bet. I really want to see the Rek'Sai presence in the bot lane. That Jinx needs to... <laughs> I really need to see her snowball if she wants to be ineffective. Because you just got Jinx and Syndra. Oh. No formidable damage really coming into the mid lane game besides them. And Jinx needs oh, a lot definitely. more help than her. Well, than yeah. I agree, actually. Um, in my opinion, for the laning phase, Jinx should have a little bit of advantage towards like pre-6 stuff. But as soon as Twitch um, post-6, Twitch is probably going to be able to get going a little bit. So uh, definitely, once again, per usual, pressure on junglers to really make these games work. Uh, the Kane, if he is able to read the pathing of Rek'Sai, he's going to be able to have a pretty good time um, Finding the 3v3 and the 2v2 in the mid and the bot lane. So I expect the Kane to. I, I hope that the Kane has really good pathing, trying to match the side and trying to protect both his bot and mid lane. I really want to see both jungles actually focus on the bot lane because both teams, mid laners, they're going to make it to the late game and it's just a matter of time. Like Syndra mm -hmm. doesn't have to do anything for quite a bit, just has to press R at the right time and she's going to snowball after that point. Azir's mm -hmm. the same. You can keep him down, but once he gets that farm into that late game, he is just a monster. But both the Twitch and the Jinx really need some help. Twitch being more favorable to the to the late game than Jinx, with mm -hmm. just being left to his own uh, demise. Yeah. And another thing that you want to look at for TPM, um, TPM does have the Maokai with the long range engage, uh, point and click uh, CC. Um, just having a lot of ways to not only peel, but also engage for TPM. While CryQuest, I feel like they have a little bit of unreliable engage. Uh, engage. Rek'Sai, not really, not a lot of Rek'Sai's these days. I don't think they're going for the Cinder Hulk anymore. They're more or less going for the Warrior, trying to get as much um, from the improved A, uh, improved AD scalings on Rek'Sai. And Gallo, he does have his E and his ultimate, but it's not really more, it's not really of a reliable engage. Syndra too. She has a long range stun, but it's not as reliable as opposed to Maokai and Rakan's uh, ability to engage. No, the engage can Plus be up for for us. It's just relying on Rek'Sai. Galio is their sense of engaging. Yeah. If Rek'Sai is able to get a good ultimate in onto the backline, if he takes it like just preemptively, he can deliver mm -hmm. Galio to that backline and completely disrupt them. That is like the ultimate team fight win condition while you have Janna appealing for Jinx and Syndra on the backline. Oh yeah, definitely. And I feel like TPM here, they have a lot of tools to play with. The Twitch Stealth, Kane's uh, pathing due to his um, E, and Rakan's Maokai is just long range engage. TPM has a lot of ways to really get into the back line of uh, CryQuest and also have ways of picking him off. But not to say the least, CryQuest also has way a, a lot of ways to respond to Janna disengage, Galio with his ultimate, uh, Syndra's long range stun. I feel like both teams, it's just a matter of who can use your tool, who, who, who can utilize your tools better. In my opinion, TPM has a lot more than Krykos, but uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. It has a lot more, and it's much easier to execute. Rakan and or Malkai, or even the Kane, can just run at them. No planning really involved needed. You just run. 
and it's fine. Rakan can just immediately quickness battle dance, get the setup for the Melkai, get the twisted advance going on, and Twitch can just sit on the sideline and spray and pray. Azir poking from the back line as well, he's a really safe mage from that back. But much easier comp to execute than Cry Quest. Yeah, definitely. And it's just I think one more point I do wanna like harp on for a Cry Quest comp. Like, even though Jinx may not seem strong right now, it's still scary to deal. If CryQuest can hold off to the late game, it's going to be really scary to deal with Jinx plus Janna plus Galio plus Syndra protecting her. And it's like, you have TPM's objective. If they can take out the Jinx, their game should be um, a lot. The game should be a lot easier for them. Um, but right now, I feel like TPM will have the advantage here. But it only it all depends on just what the Kane and the Rexai are able to do in the lane phase, you know? What do you think we're gonna have out here? We're gonna have Rost or Shadow Assassin coming out from this game. Honestly, like for a game like this, I'd like to see the Rost simply because his uh the W knockup is really nice. Um his ultimate allowing him to heal, get back to fight is something really nice, especially against a Galio. Um, on uh, percent on hit damage, although the Shadow Assassin could be cool too. Um, it's gonna be really interesting to see. Um, if he does go for Shadow Assassin, because Shadow Assassin does allow um, Kane to have a more reliable burst as opposed to Ross being a more reliable, uh, being more consistent in fights with that sustain than a uh, way to peel with the knockup and a way to um, just dive in and out with his ultimate. I want to say, uh, Shadow Assassin, I would go for if Rek'Sai goes just full damage. If he doesn't, oh, yeah. then having only one tank available to really ult off for the Kane won't be as viable. But if Rek'Sai goes uh, tank, he should definitely go Rost. Damn. Yeah, I'd imagine it's just going to be all in the ba based on the pace in the game. If TPM is ahead, I fully expect to see that Shadow Assassin game. Shadow Assassin is just going to be able to allow TPM to snowball a little bit faster, do a lot more damage, and most importantly, just be another threat on this side of TPM with the Azir and the Twitch. However, if TPM does fall behind, Ross is always a great fallback as he is. Um, he does have to sustain um, percent damage, doesn't really rely too much on the 80 skillings as much as. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Shadow Assassin King. And, you know, he can go for more take your build path. Honestly, it just depends on how this game's gonna, how the pay, how the early game pace is just gonna go. It looks like teams are slowly starting to load into games. Should be going on way in about another thirty seconds. Yeah, and honestly, looking at both teams, I I just want to say that this is probably gonna be a very bloody game. Because once again, like I talked about earlier, both teams have a lot of tools to work with here and i feel like there's going to be a lot of ways for t both tpm and cryquest to be caught out to uh be caught off guard and be punished for you know aggressive plays they both teams might be going for it's just in a matter of who can soap off first and i feel like for me i'm looking at tpm having the advantage here but it can go either way the other rex side taking Fervor as well, which is a bit more of an aggressive mastery if you want to go for it. Could have went the courage yeah, imagine, as well. I'd imagine uh, right now, in my opinion, I played a little bit of Rek'Sai these days. You prefer the Fervor because of just you know the 80 skilling buffs on Rek'Sai when he when she did go through um, the mini rework. Sorry, and in my opinion, it's a lot easier to work with Fervor. If, especially if you're against an aggressive jungler like Kane, like you two are probably going to be clashing in the jungle a lot. Um, Courage of Colossus is nice, but the build pass that most Rek Sides have been taking, going for Warrior, then Black Cleaver, maybe GA Rush. Um, I don't, I, I don't, I honestly don't really like the Courage of Colossus now on Rek Sai. As Rek Sai for me is more seen of just um, a high, high damage bruiser, I guess, or just a bruiser. Alright, looks like they're loaded into game. 
gonna bring us into the game and cool. All right, on our red side we have Team Penta mid with Gamma Cos in the top lane, Ariana Grande in the jungle, OG Prayer in the mid lane, Crompto and Ring as our bot lane. On CryQuest we have Kador in our top lane, Boosted Lisa in the jungle, Booty Bandit in the mid lane, Nebulum and Aidan Haller in the bot lane. Let's see who's gonna rise to become Rampage's next champions. All right. Yeah, this is going to be a great series. Both teams, I love how they play. They're both really aggressive. They both want to get things going. A um, couple things to look at for those of us just joining. Um, Booty Bandit 77's uh, Zir, very well known among the community. Um, he is pretty comfortable in the champion. And also looking at the Jinx. Um, if the Jinx can scale up, she's going to be an issue to deal with. Um, Currently looking at both sides early game starting. Uh, probably not gonna neither team probably not gonna go for an invade. Uh, just playing defensively, getting out river wards, seeing if anything funky is going on. But I don't think um I don't think uh, either team it, or is really pressured here to force an invade. I think it's pretty clear what both teams are looking for here. Now we're just gonna throw out the line of scrimmage, sit back. No one really wants to go in for that early game. Yeah, especially considering that I think both teams level one is actually not that great. They don't no no one's probably gonna really have the crowd control to deal with either side. Maybe if Rakan takes his W start, but I think Rakan actually takes Q. Let me double check. He hasn't really leveled anything yet, but generally Which is um, smart for him. Yeah. Wait and see what happens. But both jung actually no, both jungler's gonna Start at Raptors, possibly. Oh, man. I don't think they're, they're definitely going to be on opposite sides of the map this game. So, Raptors start. That's great. If the Rek'Sai is running EXP Quince, I expect an early game cup top. All right. We Twitch and Recon taking a bit of a time to get the lane. Stopping by real quick. Not going to lose out on any EXP, though. Unfortunately. Oh, yeah, definitely. Jinx pushing the wave just a bit too fast for that. But they took a while, and I'm not quite sure why. If we look at all the lanes right now, it's really going to be up to the junglers to try to get something going, as no one's really pressured to really play aggressive here. Um, both bot laners, they do want to wait for the own individual with power spikes. Same thing for the mid lane. And top lane is just the usual tank versus tank matchup. They're both just trying to, right now, build up their stats and... Uh, you know, hopefully get some damage, but as we see in the mid lane right now, OG Prayer, Booty Bandit 77, both trading, and right now, yeah. Good old early game start. Something interesting oh. I like to note, um, neither of Boosted Leeson's buffs, he hasn't taken either buff in the first three minutes of the game. That's a very odd jungle clear to me, I think, and Right now, Ariana Grande is looking to punish it. Maybe oh, first blood going at OG Prayer. Not oh, Booty Bandit Knox respecting the damage, not expecting just to be auto attacked to death. Not sure what was quite happening there. He just stayed within range of spheres, and he got hit by the stun. Still had flash, still had barrier. Yeah, maybe Booty Bandit probably just disrespecting the Syndra a little bit. Um. I don't think he's going to make that same mistake again, hopefully, but a little <laughs> bit of um, interesting things going on mid. However, in the top lane, a little bit of a trade going on between the Maokai and the Galio. Unfortunately, Gamma Chaos is going to be able to come off on top. Good twist and advance to dodge movement. out the taunt. Just perfectly yeah. timed there. You know, I, I really find it interesting how Boosted Eason was able to take his first buff at around like 3.30. And not get punished at all from Ariana Ground Bay. Um, you know, I guess, you know, he was expecting for the cane to take the usual double buffs um, into like that first spec or whatnot. But Whistle Leeson able to get away with going starting for Raptors into Krugs for a little bit of a gold advantage. And, you know, now he's taking his buffs. So let's see what he can do with them. Oh, yeah, it's really weird. He just went back and got his other. Starting jungle item, I guess the clear really helps. The mana really helps for Kane at that point. He's using his Q for free, which feels pretty nice. 
But the Rakan I mean, the battle dance and turn oh boy, that's the, oh. oh, the cane doing a lot of damage. Nebulum trying to get hopefully the Jinxie out. No, yeah. Jinx not going to be able to get away. Both summoners used. However, Janna trying to use the Howling Gale to get away. Yes. Uh, Ring is going to be able to get out, but Crumto is going to be paying uh, with a gank down at by, by Wizzleason. Great job from the side of TPM. Yeah, you really have to change up your warding power, uh, patterns when going against Kane because he can come from just such awkward angles coming in through that thick wall there. They should have seen it, but they let uh, Nebulum get a bit too many stacks on them and not expecting the expunge, uh, contaminate damage to come out as much yeah. as it did. And you, this is, you know, once again, like you said earlier in the chat select, it's, bot lane's going to be really important for the side of CryQuest. If Jinx doesn't really get going, they're not going to be able to have a consistent form of damage for a very long time. OG Prayer does, on the Syndra, does have a lot of burst damage, but you need that consistency from your ADC. Taking that first early death isn't really gonna help Cryquest a lot, but hopefully let's see if they can let's see if they can bounce Scout back on it. Week nearly misses. I would have been death with the unleashed powers up right now. Level disadvantage coming out to Booty Bandit. Yeah, Booty Bandit really gonna have to respect um, the level six Sindra power spike here. If he does get hit with one scattered a week, he's probably gonna be taken down. It feels really bad for Crumpton not even able to come with a coal to help kind of regain some of the mini difference, although she... The CS is still pretty the same down there. Unleashed oh, Power no. comes out, and that's just deleted by R. Yeah, that's OG just unfortunate. I, once again, Booty Bandit, he had the barrier! He had the flash! <laughs> but he just at least one not of at the least. I mean, not flash in that instance, maybe both, but barrier, yeah. please. It's there for a reason, yeah. a relatively shorter cooldown. Yeah, it's just unfortunate, and... Booty Bandit just... He had the tools to be able to counter the ultimate, but he just decides not to use it. Crumpto going for a back here, not sure if I really agree, but he does get the BF sword, which is going to be really nice for the Jinx, as she is a bit behind right now. And just noticing the Doran shield coming out from the Jinx, which I really enjoy against uh, Twitch. The poison damage, you pretty much just heal off of one auto from uh, Nebulum here. Yeah, definitely a safe starting item to go against with Twitch. But, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see how that plays out. How are Arya Grande going for the countering Boosted Lee Sin? Twist. However, Boosted Lee Sin, he does have a level advantage, but the Galio is going to be looking for the oh, ult. Oh, flash no! over the wall. Yeah, Galio good flash on Arya Grande. Unfortunate for Boosted Lee Sin. How we, if we look at the bot lane, uh, RDM Halar going just for Grumpo. Yeah. Just a little bit of trade towards the bot side. Unfortunate for recently Sin. He looked like he was going to get the better of the trade, as he did have the level advantage, but... Oh, no! Yeah, Barrier! Unle he uses it, but... <laughs> he uses it too late when no other damage is coming out. Uh, Unleashed yeah. Power wasn't quite up yet. Gonna have oh, to back man. out and forfeit a lot more CS over this. Sindra actually diving up behind the tower. Yeah, right now, OG Prairie, he's doing a lot of work in that mid lane. Probably going to be a very good asset for the team of Krypa sending into this game, as they want to... You know, just wait for the Jinx to scale up. They have the Syndra to hopefully do some damage. Now the top lane actually winning and putting pressure. The bot, the mid lane definitely putting pressure. I really need to see Ariana Grande uh, help out this bot. Make some communication. Get them to push that way back. Bait out a... Oh. Unleashed power not enough to take out Boost. At least then getting healed from his Shadow yeah. Step. His Good shadow invade step. from Mochi Prayer. Catching on Boosted Lee Sin right as he spawns. However, a knock up on Crumpto, maybe a little bit of trade here, but Nebulum's a bit low. Not going to be able to go for it. And it's just going to be a little bit of CS missed from Nebulum. Just trying to dissuade him, make him think there's another gang coming on because they still have no ward coverage coming out from down there. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like right now, Boosted Lee Sin may shoot worry a little bit. Unfortunately, it's been at least like a minute and 30 now since he spawned. He hasn't been able to get his junk creep, so he's going to be a tiny bit behind here as Ariana Grande looking to just try to start something in a bot lane. Twitch is out of mana. This could be a dive from the side of CryQuest, possibly. Next, I said it already is spotted by a ward. Going to find that pink ward. Maybe? No, nope. just going to leave it. Go by. Take out Dragon. Call it a day. Yep. But basically, sit on this cane. It's not. This is not one of those champs you can let an option for an idle uh, start to your game. He needs those stacks to come out for his passive. Oh yeah, definitely. 
And as you can see right now, it's just, if you see, look at Boosted Lee Sin, he is going for the invade on the top side, hopefully to find Rek'Sai, as he does have a little bit of an advantage because he does have the bonus AD. Gonna just settle with taking the Raptors as bot lane and mid lane, they both continue to trade both sides. Big lead on the mid lane for OG Prayer right now. The center pick really working out. And that's gonna be Dragon for Arne Grande. Um, it's just, just you know, when you have bot lane. Yeah, it is just a cloud, but still a good objective to pick up. Especially, it's gonna help a lot towards the late game if you wanna get those rotations in or whatnot. Uh, definitely. Right now, it probably would have felt nice to have an Ocean Drake just to press all this advantage even harder. Yeah. And it's just, you know, right now, I feel like both junglers, they aren't really doing much for um, the bot side. Besides that one time you saw Boost Beeson go for the gank onto Crumtail Ring, um, this Nebulum and Adam Halar, they've just been shoved in constantly, and that's gonna be first turret going over to the side of Cryquest. First turret gold, helping that Jinx come out a bit even here. Actually yeah. having a CS lead, somehow. Yeah, really unfortunate that the top play not working out just didn't allow Boost Lee Sin to get a lot of pressure towards the bot side, and it's just, yeah, un unfortunate. However, yeah. if you look at the top side, Cryquest looking to make a play. for a gank on the kid over here. Yeah. Kid or not, Kato having right the now. vision to spot it out. Get spotted. Yeah. They need to wait for that mini wave to really come. The nature's graphs coming out. Try to delay as much as you can. Probably miss time there. Yeah, because he's not gonna not get out too much Kato. farther. Tom yeah, comes Kato. out. Flash comes out. So Wizard Advance comes out on the Cinder and Gonna Galio takes the tower aggro. Kator just damn, oh my power god, comes out. he's just still so tanky. Taking down, yeah, he's still but... living. OG Prior taking the tower aggro now. Coming down, it's not oh, going to be no! enough to save him. The Galio ult not going to be enough damage resistance. You need Booty. to be. <laughs> you need to plan those dives out for a side of Cryquest. It looked good with the start, but it was just. I don't know. It just wasn't executed properly. It was just a bit Wrong too targets. rushed. Uh, yeah. The tower juggling was not there. There were no minions to even help out with the situation. You have to let the minions come in, take the first tower aggro, so you can get in close where you need to be. But yeah, and also take advantage of the fact that if Rek'Sai, you can dodge the damage. However, you look at the bot side, I don't know who a lot going Rek's for. Attack coming Crumto, actually out. taking a lot of damage. Monshu coming out, can't and join the fight. Oh Umbro man. Fast coming out onto Crumto here. Gonna take out some damage, the shield's gonna be just enough. They should be going down. Nebulon grabs himself a kill, and will Ping be able to get out? Tornado comes up good, oh, no. disengaged, but not enough to stop. He's at least in. And that's what we were talking about earlier. It's really important for the side of TPM. Punish this aggressive bot lane. Always pushing in towards on the side of... Uh, basically, he's getting caught out just a little bit, getting a little health from the Shadow Staff. Gonna get the slow off, gonna try dashing away, and... <laughs> Unfortunate. Scout of the Week takes out the kill before he didn't have Underworld yeah. Trespass up yet. Great invade from Arya de Grande looking to punish um, Loose Leeson as he did take a little bit of damage with that bot side. However, Arya de Grande taking a little bit of damage towards turret. No, he's going to be able to get out. Just another tunnel out. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Going back on the fact that Cryquest has been playing a really aggressive bot lane, if you want to push past the river, you need good wards for the side of Cryquest. You know there's a cane out there. He has wacky jungle pathing. But however, a disconnect, maybe Crumpton? a pause coming out? Oh, there yeah. we go. <laughs> Don't want to see that going That's too gonna be a pause. All right. Cool, pause. so let's take this time to really talk about how this game's going so far. I think one thing I want to talk about here with you is how, how do you think the jungle is going for both sides? What what would you say how Boost Lee Sin and Ari Grande have done so far? Despite uh, Boost Lee Sin being at about 500 gold ahead right now, being a nice... The pathing has been good. He's been p pretty much power farming the jungles. But Kane needs to make those ganks. Gank for no reason. Just gank to get the damage off. You need those stacks to come up. We don't want to wait too well far in the game for a transformation. And it doesn't even matter about who you prioritize first. It's the last bits that come in will decide what he turns into, what's available. Yeah, definitely. And I, if there's something I could criticize on Lucid Lee Sin, it's just right now, you 
the first gank you did bot lane, um, when Nebulon and Duhal are, he they got you know the good um, damage onto come to the ring coming uh, coming down for the bot lane to get some extra damage getting that assist was great. Keep applying that bot lane pressure so Crumpto and Ring aren't able to free farm and constantly shove Nebula and Arduino Halar in. You don't need to go towards topside right now because it's a Galli versus Maokai matchup. They're both going to be even for a majority of the game. They're not going to be able to kill each other. It's just wet noodles all around. No one's really going to get that far ahead until the Galli yeah. ult somewhere down mid. And mid doesn't even need the health. She's just destroying her lane. And if we could talk about top lane right now, pretty in there's one interesting buying uh item choice and that is the swifty boots on to galio not sure i feel about that that's that's a little weird i guess you want to run faster to get into ult range but how about some merc treads there yeah even uh i mean tabbies would have been great yeah the like Boots of Swiftness, they only really do give an extra 10 movement speed, and that's pretty much it. Back in the day when, um, originally when Swifty Boots, I think, gave like, around 60 movement speed, or like <laughs> That was the 65. rush item for that, everyone. Yeah, everyone would get it, because like 900 gold and give you that movement speed. Like, why not? But right now, Swifty Boots, you're just getting an extra 10 movement speed. That's not really as impactful as something tanky like a Ninja's Tabbies or a Mercury, or Merc Treads. You know? We have Syndra having an 1800 gold lead over Azir right now, and that's pretty much the entire gold advantage. If a TPM here can eliminate Syndra, it's going to be the rest of the team is just going to be cake. No one else can stand up because their entire gold lead and more is just piled into the Syndra. Although being 3 1, able to put out that pressure, she needs to start roaming, or let's get a push in to the, open up this mid tower. Yeah, really, the mid lane has been the story of this game so far. OG Perry able to get two soul kills onto Booty Bad at 77. Just because Booty Bad it, he just disrespected the damage and wasn't able to use the summoner spells. So, thanks to the OG, OG's Perry's lead, CryQuest have a little bit of a back to lean on if they couldn't get the Jinx rolling. And fair enough, you have the Syndra. He currently 3 and 1, does a lot of damage. Um, it's just the question for TPM. Can they get onto the Sintra? Because, you know, TPM, like I said earlier in Champ Select, he, he has a lot, they have a lot of tools. The Maokai, the Kane, the Zir, and the Rakan. Heck, you can even count the spell from Twitch. If they are able to ward properly and hopefully catch um, Cryquest off guards from one of, the, one of their aggressive invades who've been doing so far, I think TPM will be able to bounce back if they can just make sure they have good vision control and assess the situation they're currently, growing, uh, they're currently going through. As long as they can take out OG Prayer and stop him from ulting out the Twitch, they should have a decent time into these late game, mid to late game team fights that we're not even at yet. And Sindra's just destroying it out. Yeah, but... for the side of CryQuest, you just want to try to push this lead as much as you can. Group as a whole, make it harder to kill the Syndra and allow Sintra to just have a lot of pressure towards um, the four-man, um, whether it's sieging the ports to mid or to bot, um, as long as you send off the Galio to do split pushing and force the other jungler to come um, to match, I think Crycus right now, they're in a really good position to potentially take this game one. Yeah, especially since even with all that pressure, the gold difference down in bot isn't actually that much right now. Like. Jinx being down, being 0-2 against the 2-0 Twitch actually isn't down too much gold, given that tower bonus and giving us the S lead. Actually, yeah, coming right. back see yeah, OG, OG prayer, prayer Get not be ready. Up. Oh my! Um, that feels like a bit of cheese right there. I feel like the fact that we just talked about OG prayer out there, him, it's being important to protect OG prayer as he is a majority of the damage right now. Him getting caught out like that is just. I feel like that's a little bit of cast curse, unfortunately. TPM going to be able to get some damage on this mid tower, not going to be able to take it, however, but it's going to be feeling nice from TPM mm -hmm. to get some pressure back. Point though, Kronto hasn't reconnected. Yeah, I guess um, on a side of between both teams, they just decided to. Uh, play out this game as you can't really go I, as there is a pause time limit 
uh, for these games. So I guess just a bit of an unfortunate timing for but Cryquest. Even then, we give them like a pretty big waiver when it comes to like finals and being streamed out like this. I'm not sure what happened to Crumpto. I wasn't able to see the chat, but he's just not returning. Yeah. However, if you look at the side of TPM right now, they're going to be taking advantage of this. They are going to go for the Rift Hero, but going to be wavered off maybe? No, they're going to still continue to apply pressure. I feel like right now, in a 5v4 situation, TPM have the advantage, you know, due to numbers. Kato are using his ult to zone him off, and it looks like this uh, Rift Hero is going to go off to the side of TPM. Yeah, it should be pretty free. All right, now we just need to send someone uh, down bot. Probably the cane, pick off that tower, send the herald into the next bot tower. And yeah. just kind of leave it, just get that damage and call it a day. Yeah, the, an interesting thing you could do with Kane is, you know, get a split push going. Simply because he just has a lot of mobility as a champion as a whole. A lot of movement speed from his E. And you could potentially even do a 1-3-1 with um, TPM's comp. However, I feel like it's a lot better if you stick with the 4-man. Um, just... You have more ways of getting to OG Prayer as he is going to be the majority of the damage for the side of Cryquest. And we do have Boosted Lee Sing going, opting into that Shadow Assassin. Yes! It's going to be all or nothing plays coming out from him. Woo! I love Shadow Assassin Kane. I think me and you can agree it's really exciting when we see that blue Kane come out simply because he just, there's, you know, no cast, <laughs> no cast time on W really helps a lot. Being able to move during that is just. Opens up a lot of opportunities for more damage and a lot more flashy plays. Yeah, definitely. Just seeing Ross dodge in and out of fight. Oh, I'm low health. I'm full health. It just gets a bit droll. Seeing yeah. actually something that on the edge of the blade's knife. And, but... I'm still pretty worried that we're continuing without Crumpto on this 4v5. Yeah. I would like to see... Right like now, a... of the Week secures a stun, but not a kill. I would have liked to have seen after that tower in the bot lane was gone, we uh, lane swap and send our people down uh, up in top. But honestly, like, I feel like just right now, TPM. Oh, however, right as I said that, Cryquest maybe kind of getting a pick on to Pretty Bad Assert. Yeah. Kedar jumps onto OG Prey. Oh my god. Galio coming down, gonna be dissuaded by the Janima soon. Yeah, and Ring gotta be really low from that <laughs> Shadow Assassin Kane. Nebula, I'm going to be able to open up, maybe taking OG Prayer, not going to be enough damage. Arya Grande able to take the cane out, however, and right now it's going to be a two-for-one favoring Cryquest. Gamma Chaos looking a bit low, but he is going to be able to get away from that. It just doesn't seem fair. <laughs> I mean, even though Cryquest right now, they're playing with only four people, they matched that fight really well. They got a good pick onto Booty Bandit 77. K trying to pick up kill. He did pick it up on the Jana, but the rest of the team was there to follow. So just unfortunate for TPM, you can't be caught off like that, especially when you have the numbers advantage. If somehow, some miracle way, OG Prayer can take this game solely in his hands, because he is the last damage threat. We have Rexai doing a little bit, get that true damage out. And thankfully boosted Lee Sin didn't actually go Ross, or that team fight probably would have gone a whole lot different, because after the Umbral Tread Pass, he was still left with only 100 health. Yeah, definitely, but as you can see right now, both teams trying to contest for this Infernal Drake. Everyone, we all know the power of Infernal Drake here. It's just, you know, the fact you get bonus AP and AD just really helps you scale towards better, towards late game, and both teams have very good late game, so this is going to be a highly contested Drake. Especially with the Shadow Assassin. We now have three carries that are all going to greatly benefit from this Infernal. And yeah, it's just another thing you got to consider right now, both bot and the top lanes for TPM, they are pushing into um, CryQuest's um, side of the map, so CryQuest, if they don't do something here, they're going to not, they're going to lose a lot of damage TP, on the towers. TP coming in from Kador, but not amounting up to anything. Oh, coming out from oh, the boy. flash, not going to be enough, going actually into ambush, going to just walk away from it. But now they're going to be pinced off, but it'll hit her a little bit. Oh, no! no! To assist, gets the charm, gets the quickness out. Monsoon's gonna have to keep him alive. However, Which... this does open up the Twitch to be able to do a lot of damage, <laughs> but however, he is gonna be able to do enough. Booty Bandit trying to do as much as he can. Health bars on the side of Krakos looking low. Gamma K has gotta be taken out. Gonna be taken out. It's just unfortunate for the side of 
TPM. It looked it looked bad for them at first, and it's continued to look bad. And they lose three people as opposed to well, actually both sides gonna be traded three for three. Kumto is still not in the game yet, which is still really good for four v five. Cinder just waited uh, for Nebulum to come out. And right moment, he just unleashed power, and that was it. Twitch got deleted yeah. from that point. Yeah, but and another thing to could... keep in mind was that, you know, the team of TPM, they were split up. Four of the members of the team, they were still at Dragon, while Nebulim was going, taking the risky path through the jungle. And a lot of wards, great wards from the side of Cryquest, spotting him out, punishing him for that. However, look at the Dragon attempt. OG Prayer may be caught out here. No, Ring is going to be knocked up. Going to take a lot of damage. Maybe going down here. Yes, he will be taken down. Galio ult gonna be able to protect OG Prayer. OG Prayer trying to look for something, but however, Booty Band 77, he is gonna be punishing OG Prayer for him sticking around. Gamma Chaos also gonna be punished, and this is probably gonna be an Infernal Drake going over to the side of TPM. That puts Booty Bandit right back in the lead, or at least even with that triple kill, which he desperately needed if he wanted to hold his ground against the Syndra, be able to do anything to the so called backline, and we're still missing the ADC. Oh yeah, definitely. And right now for CryQuest, I think realistically, they need to keep looking for their picks. It is tough to come back from a 4v5, especially when TPM has such a teamfight oriented cop. What I think CryQuest should be looking to do here, ward aggressively, look for those picks. They've worked before, they can continue to still work here, and try to work around uh, dealing with a 4v4 as opposed to being 4v5 for objectives but that's gonna be really hard tpm i feel like should be able to address that weakness and uh counterplay against it i'm gonna be very disappointed if our finals ends on a 4v5 <laughs> that's, yeah, that's just gonna be so disappointing i don't <laughs> it's bothering me a lot okay <laughs> yeah i feel you but ariana ground by looking to get a kill onto Gador. This is what I was talking about. Punish the people who are left behind at TPM. Kador taking a lot of damage right now. Well, actually, not a lot of damage. He is going to be able to heal back up. Not actually. We're just now reaching about almost live. half health. We're just going to walk. All away. right. Well, all right. Stand corrected. Mockai looking like he's taking a lot of damage. Power, but, but, but the shields keep him from dying. Yeah, that's going to be a barrier and a recon shield for the booty bandit. So he is going to be able to live that one. Right now, CryQuest right here, this is a 4v5 situation you want to avoid. And right now, all CryQuest can really do, they have to back off, they can't really engage. What looked like um, a good pick onto Ghidor turned wrong, because unfortunately, when you're trying to kill a... Uh, this comes out well, the I gotta come myself off disengages. There. Yeah, right now, CryQuest... Um, not looking good right now as Ochi Prayer is going to be taken down. Nebulim going to be able to take a lot, deal a lot of damage thanks to Spray and Pray. And Ariana Grande, unfortunately, maybe looking. Yeah, he is going to be taken down here. Great engage for the side of TPM, um, punishing CryQuest for overstaying in the bear and the uh, top side river. Now we really have to start questioning TPM's macro play. It's been a good almost 10 minutes for. Uh, being a 4v5, and they should have pressed a bit more advantage than this. They should have rotated, taken out that top tower, opened that map just a bit more, and actually secure some objectives instead of just going for these skirmishes that they're hardly coming even in. Yeah, one one thing I will say, though, is that you still got to respect a lot of the damage on the side of CryQuest. It may be a 4v5, but you got to really respect the Syndra damage because... For a good portion of the game, she did do a lot of damage, but unfortunately, TPM has been able to cry. Uh, TPM has been able to catch up to Cry Quest. So now I feel like TPM is going to be in position to potentially be able to really just aggress upon the easy objectives in this game. Yeah, definitely. Having Kador just going back to the top lane against the Galliers, hit back top top there. Neither top lane towers are gone. Kador having yeah, the advantage of like the Baron buff. Right now, maybe a topside play coming on towards the side of TPM, but Gamma Chaos is going to realize this is going to back off and this tower is going to be gone. Yeah. It's a bear buff for you. About 24 minutes of the game. It's about time for this thing to go down while the rest of the other outers are down. Another criticism to have the Recon is by himself mid lane. Uh, I don't agree with that. He can handle and... it. Crypto is back. Reconnected the ADC. Yeah, good. 
Thank goodness for that. Gamma Chaos right now looking a little bit aggressive onto Nebula. What we're gonna realize is he is gonna be able to counter engage, and Gamma Chaos almost taken down by Nebula. Only has the However, best for the armor. Not gonna be able to actually defend much. Good flash over the wall, getting out just in time, out of the range of Booty Bandit. Jinx coming in, yeah. level seven to the level 13s. Looking a little so bad here for the side of Cryquest right now. Good start of the week to stop, but the quickness and the Badlands comes out. Gaiol's coming in, good to save. OG player just narrowly. Tower's still gonna go down, taunt lands onto Adon Holler. That should yeah, be the don't disengage of fight. About <laughs> Crompto, stop. Yeah. Don't go near the front line, please. You're, <laughs> you're level 7. You just wasted a flash. You were out and for 10 minutes, but you're only 40 CS down. Yeah, right now, decide to cry quest. Although they do have their fifth player, they really got to respect the tools that TPM has this game to engage um, onto, you know, a very weak cry quest right now. So, right now, TPM, they don't really have to do much. They've just gotten three turrets with their Baron power play. Potentially uh, boosting up their gold lead by around 5k and right now all they have to do is just reset and back off and just go for another objective Dragon's about to be up, Bollian's being pushed in, just reset and go for that play next However, it looks like Cador right now, he is going to be a little bit caught out right now But he he's, does he's have a lot of away. resistances <laughs> Yeah That's going to be Maokai for you you can, catch, you can catch him off guard, but it doesn't really matter when he's a tree with just a lot of stats Neblum walking up had more damage uh more threat to him than the Kator walking away here. <laughs> At that point, he's just not going anywhere. I'd like to see a 4-1 coming out from Team Penta mid. Though, send the rest of the bot lane, clear some of that out while we have Kator, or even boosted Lee Sin if he feels up to it. Just split out yeah. the, clear that inhib. Yeah, and on the side of Crycoast right now, all they really have to do, um, well, right as I it's said, Booty Bandit almost got to take it down here. Just narrowly saves them one auto attack away. Flash comes out for no reason. Uh, OG yeah, Prayer, getting a little cocky, uh, walking away as they unleash, trying to just style on him and not landing the next auto attack was the yeah. kill difference there. Yeah, but so it's both summoners for Booty Bandit. If the next time the Zier is caught out, it's going to be a lot of trouble. Adem Halar trying to do a little bit something to decide a cry quest, but nothing's going to come from it. It's just... Just flex, and he's able to dash in and just dash right back out. No harm, no foul. Oh yeah, definitely. That's the beauty of Recon. That's the fun part. Un so, another thing to really point out here, unfortunately, due to the fact that the OG Prayer was not able to get the kill onto Booty Blast, uh, Booty Bandit, he was out of mana, <laughs> so he couldn't really... So, the side of Karikas, they couldn't really attest towards that dragon. So, that's gonna be two Infernal Drakes! To a side of TPM, not looking good for the side of CryQuest. Let's see what they can do. Finally gonna put some people on that bot lane. Gonna let the top wave, it's just gonna crash into the tower. Should send one yeah, member right up now. there, or... Jinx getting a bit too far ahead. Cinder's not gonna take on the 1v5 there. Yeah, right now, the siege onto the side of TPM. You need to fear it. It is an Azir. Um... And he does have a lot of tools to force people off those towers. Currently, TPM is trying rather stick with the five man rather than go for the four one. Completely fine though, because it's been working out for them so far. Oh yeah, definitely. When they're uh, cry can't actually stand up that well to the siege unless someone stands in the way. Oh no! Flashing out, unleashed power just does what it needs to do. Great scattered weak. Yeah, great scatter reek from the side of OG Prayer. Gonna be able to catch out of uh, no summoners, booty band at 77 uh, off guard. So that's really good for Cryclust. Questionable Galio ult there. The team was backing off. TPM was already running away. But he just ults in to get an extra few feet, I guess. Oh no! <laughs> Cryclust trying to look for more, but yeah, that is a. Center, that's the ult. Oh, Jeez. Nice Jinx up the ult. Uh, Buzz gonna yeah, be one almost taken out. Yeah. Not bad, but, you know, I don't think Krykos had to really con aggress on that. They already got the pick off the Booty Bandit. They could have just, you know, walked away, and it would have been a good day. Ghidorah not really going to be ta taking a lot of damage for Ochi Prayer. That's what, you know, Tire Combo. 174 Magic Resist is going to do for you. Tire Combo there. One auto, sap. We're good. That's just math, I think. <sighs> 
the good old Spirit of the Sage pass feeling from the Maokai. Booty Bandit taking this blue buff, gonna be able to help him a lot. If there's one thing I need to criticize on Booty Bandit 77 right now, it is the fact that his positioning has been a little bit questionable. Dying twice to OG Prayer for him to pass Single around five, six minutes. last time too. Yeah. Like, you have to really be careful with your positioning on Azir. You know, he has a shorter range now, but you really need to respect what CryQuest can do. And wait, that's a turret. I don't think the turret was necessary, but I guess it's just there. I'm gonna put pressure. We're gonna start the ARM back up in mid. Wait oh, for yeah, Ad definitely. Add on to get back into the team. ARM's like my favorite mode, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm not really against this. Yeah, Evelyn is gonna be able but to do the power, ultimate. The heals yeah. and shields coming out from Rakan and just enough to not make it do anything. Yeah, Nebulum. Thankfully, he did have the Rakan to help shield him a bit and the heal. However, the Maokai ult gonna force side of CryQuest to grow away, but good flank on the Common Chaos, but no follow-up, but there is a Jinx ult, not gonna do a lot of damage, Common Chaos gonna be backing off here as there is really no damage, but if you look at the cane, he is looking for the engage, taking <laughs> two, Crumpto, Ariana Gombe, gonna be taken down by the cane flank from downtown. Great job on the side of TPM, they continue to siege. That's that Shadow Assassin come in, Q, you're all gone. Especially yeah. for a Crumpto, who's just a few levels under. Yeah, you really got to be careful when you got a cane on the enemy team. He has some wacky pathing you can do, and just Cryquest not really respecting it. I will say, though, Gamma Chaos, he had a great engage. Getting the flank, getting the three, four-man taunt, and just, however, Cryquest was just in a position. This is the new just the lead, Soji Prayer. Yeah, and that's going to be two other kills picked up for TPM. That's going to be an in. Oh, some damage actually coming out. All coming out onto the okay. Jinx. Going to be pushed back into the middle of the team. Recon Quickness and Battle Dance comes out, but Crompton's going to actually take the kill. Do what they can to defend against the Zen hit, but it's going to go down anyway. Good try, and Crompto gets almost three shot with the Azir and Nebulon coming just to destroy him. Yeah, CryQuest, honestly, trying to start something, but... They gotta realize they were like a man down during that. And Arda Grombe, he does go in. However, he is immediately counter gained Sean on the side of TPM and is taken down by the switch. Well, coming out, not enough to kill anyone. Just throwing out for kicks and giggles there. Yeah, I like to just just point out right now for the side of CryQuest, it's just a lot of unfortunate circumstances. Crumto not being able to be present for at least three, uh, one-fourths of the game, really taking a toll right now as he is pretty behind in damage-wise, but he is still keeping up with CS because CryQuest was able to get a, a lot of, you know... Hand him over a yeah, lot he was able to catch back point. up a little bit. Yeah. That's what they need to do because he they need him as the secondary carry at this point. OG Prayer looking for the stun, not going to get anything. I can say about OG Prayer, the Scatter of the Week stuns have been on point to save these fights. Honestly, most just hit or miss, but right now, a lot of great Scatter of the Weeks coming from OG Prayer on the Syndra. Definitely a pick you need to fear going further into the series. Like so this. right now it seems that side of TPM, they are looking to set up, get some vision onto this Baron. Um, however, CryQuest, they're more or less being pushed back because you still gotta remember TPM does have the advantage. But if TPM loses one or two more fights, they're gonna be really Twitch punished for it. Nebulum's going down for this last Infernal Drake. Just the three stacks gonna be deadly. Next Drake's going to be the Elder Dragon. And yeah, and CryQuest <laughs> is not in position to, you know, really counter this play. No, so dragon's that's gone. That's three. Drake. When yeah. Infernal Drake comes out, six dragons on that booty bandit on Nebulum. They will just shred the entire team regardless of how tanky you are. Yeah, Fuego Fuego on the side of TPM. So be careful for the side of CryQuest. Any CryQuest friends out there really hoping for a miracle to happen, but right now it's just, TPM is just really dominant with their map positioning and just not letting Krykos have the opportunity to have counter plays. Right now as we see, Oj Prayer, he doesn't have mono, so this might be a great time for Recently the side of taking TPM. a bit of damage from that Baron. 
<laughs> Going down to quarter health. I'm a little unfortunate that you're not Ross at that point, but you're still okay. Yeah. I feel like... Well, TPM. TPM just needs to force this Baron, or at least force a fight out of it. Do something yeah, to pick they, off the they, Syndra. Jinx isn't even yeah, around they, here anymore. Yeah, well, it's just like, TPM, I don't really... This is really questionable for them. You see the low HP Syndra try to force something off of it. If they see the uh, Jinx bot lane now, right now is a perfect time to go for Baron, but they gotta go instead for the mid lane push. I guess they have super minions starting to invade the uh, base. Galio just not being able to do enough to keep them off. Not gonna go for the Baron, gonna get yeah. the tower instead. Scout of the week gets them out quick. This actually comes down, down to the Syndra. But no one there to follow up. He's going to get the hill, going to get the redemption out, going to heal up the team pretty well. That's going to be a second inhibitor going down in favor of Team Penta mid. Now we go to yeah, Baron. Kador, <laughs> that's all from the side of Kador, really pushing off CryQuest off of one of their objectives. In my defense, in, in TPM's defense, I guess, it looked, didn't really look like a good play at start, but they really did take advantage of the fact that Jinx and the Galio were not in a position to do anything. So portal, portal combat, combat. Huh? <laughs> thank you yeah. i mean that's the only fitting thing i see right now jinx gonna be able to take down the azir tower but however tpm gonna be able to take down the baron buff and already got by sitting in the baron pit not gonna be able to do anything there tpm just waltz off there i don't think that's a worthwhile trade but i mean no, the extra 50 gold coming over prompto and baron Woo! <laughs> yeah he gets what he can get all right now we just have someone walk up to the top lane because Supermains are already there. Yeah, exciting two minutes of action, seeing a little bit of support of combat. Azir turret getting taken down, but that does lead to <laughs> the Baron buff on the side of TPM. Right now, TPM, easy, easy, easy macro play for them right now. They just need to go for the simple objectives. Getting the blue buff right now for Booty Bandit 77. Go for the bot side, get the turret, push for the win. Yeah. And they can't, like, they have three Infernal Drakes, and they just let Booty Band and Nebulum attack onto the Baron for so long. They they can take it out so fast. Yeah, definitely. And if there's another... Oh, no. The Super Minion. That's not the, that's not what you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Sindra just puts I, it there. Uh, wait, was OG player just trying to intentionally help? Well, the tower is invulnerable at that point, while there's a tower farther out still alive. So it's helping wait, the Super Minion just die. Now that, that that's true. Down. Wait, that was weird. How is the super minion able to attack that turret when there was another turret? What? It's still able to attack even... It's not going to do any damage, but it's still able to pretend to attack. Alright. So that's just what we <laughs> right? try to do. Right, we'll take the win on this one. Spaghetti code strikes <laughs> again. Alright, another thing. Let's get back into the game here. The canyon minions going to be able to do a little bit of damage onto the turret right now. As you guys saw earlier... The inhibitor just came back up for the top side of CryQuest. So, that's something, right? Huh? Well, for them it is. Yeah. But right now they're just getting split across the map. They are yeah, hardly and able Kador, to Yeah, and once again, the zoning Maokai off to get this turret. Turret goes down with the oh, full flash coming up from Gaiman. Ooh, great counter engage from the side of TPM. Booty Bandit at 77, gonna be able to get the Ar Ariana Grande and Nebulim, gonna be able to clean up the Galio. Great, uh, great Azir ult, oh, pick up that double kill onto the Jinx. Awesome job, but however, OG Pair gonna be able to get a revenge kill. Adun Halar, however, picks up the kill onto the Syndra, and this is gonna be game for the side of TPM. Game one, going off to TPM. Maybe it's due to unfortunate circumstances, but TPM gonna be able to start off this series strong. I'm going to attribute that completely to unfortunate circumstances, having Crumpton being out for so long, because he was still able to do decent things into the mid. Like, once he came back, he was able to do some decent damage after he got, you know, almost equal in levels. It's just really unfortunate that he was going to be out for a majority of that game. Hopefully, yeah, he can do a much better performance in game two. Technical problems happen all the time, and this should affecting CryQuest a lot. You know, you still have a lot of opportunities. This is a five-game series, best of five. CryQuest still does have a lot of opportunities to bounce back. And I feel like next game, they had they had all the advantages. They just need to get, once again, that good mid lane matchup and making sure protecting that bot lane more as CryQuest was pushing up pretty aggressively towards that early game. I feel like 
if Cryquest can realize their weaknesses and play around it, they can probably bounce back. They should bounce back. Hopefully. Alright, we're gonna go off for just a little break. In a few minutes, we're gonna come back with game two Cryquest versus Team Pencil Mid. Alright, don't leave us. Woohoo! I'm gonna start this 